welcome to today's multilingual story. I'm super excited to have Flor Garcia as my guest today. We've been following each other on Instagram for a while now, and today is the first time we get to talk, and I'm really, really curious to hear her story. Flor works as a consultant for multilingual families. She gives online lessons in Spanish for children, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and she's now going to tell us a little bit about her background. So, Flor, do you want to tell us where did you grow up and how did you grow up? Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Petina, for this opportunity. I, I, I love to have the chance to share my story with your audience. I'm com I come from Venezuela. So I was born in Venezuela in South America. And I travel a lot with my family, but I was never an expat child. I, was, I, I never lived outside of Venezuela. So Venezuela was my uh, little Caribbean tropical bubble where I spent my, my, all my years until I was 22. Mm -hmm. But I uh, met my husband in a Christmas party. He is an American. He was born in California. And then we met and it was, yeah, it's going to sound cliche, but it was love at first sight. And <laughs> <laughs> we were young and he, I was 22 years old. And then, you know, we met in December and then nine months later, I was packing my bags and moving to the United States. Because, wow. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is the man of my life. I finished my law degree. I have okay. a, I'm a mature. I was an attorney in Venezuela and then I decided that I was going to leave everything mama and leaving and going with my husband to the states well we married there and uh, we live in Dallas Texas and there we had three kids three children they are teenagers now 16 14 and 13 and that's how our bilingual journey is started um, I spoke and I speak always Spanish at home Mm -hmm. And my husband, and with your, husband? With it, your husband, we speak Spanish because he speaks Spanish as well. Okay. Yes. So it was important for me. I don't know, Bettina, if it happens to you too, but there are some feelings that you can just express yes. in your language. Absolutely. And, and, and I always ask when I have the interview or when I do the coaching for the multilingual families, like, um, express with your express to your kids your feelings in the language you feel most comfortable. Absolutely. And, and for me, I love. I I get angry or I dislike <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah, but there is no way. Exactly. So so that was that. That is the language that I used to speak to my kids. Now we live in Germany. We came to Fulda. Uh, that's it. A small town uh, nearby Frankfurt. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You gotta stop here. How did you get from <laughs> Dallas to Fulda, please? <laughs> uh, Eduardo got a job proposal from a company, from a German company. He right. is an FDA expert. You know, he con quality control, but from the American uh, regulation side. Right. And he used to come to Germany very often. Right. And in one of those trips, they told him, they asked him, Eduardo, okay. do you want to stay? And I'm like, he calls me. They are asking me to stay. I'm like, well, why not? Let's do it. And we, we made a decision over the phone. Wow. Well, okay. We, we got to stop here. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's a really interesting part of the story because Venezuela, Dallas. Yes. Like, I mean, that, that in itself is already, I think, quite a wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Hulda. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how old were your kids when were your kids when you moved to Germany? Uh, nine, eight, seven. What did they say? Uh, the little one, Veronica, seven year old, she was excited. She's like, Whoa, this is gonna be an adventure. I'm gonna have a new house. She was excited. Uh, Miguel, uh, he was eight, he was more like, Okay, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I, 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 lost the first one my oldest child eddie he said mommy you are ruining my life i can imagine yes uh -huh. uh, i will never learn that stupid language and i hate it already and i'm like but you have never spoken you you don't know how how is it i already know that i'm not gonna be good at it oh god i know that <laughs> I don't, my eldest is not that old yet but i know that yes it is, I know, you're running my life. And then we came here, but Tina, I can assure you, he is the one who doesn't want to leave. Wow. Uh -huh. 
and he wow. speaks German beautifully. I, I, I hear him and I'm like my heart beeps. And I said, Eddie, mama, this is my home. I'm Eddie. Wow. So the, the friends, they joke and say Eddie from Fulda because Eddie feels that he's here. Mama, I want but to How long have you lived there now? Six years. Six years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six and years. you plan on staying there now, I suppose. Now, yes. Yeah. It, yeah. This is a very cool, a very difficult age range i think this teenager thing you know Bettina, the the peers are their point of reference now yes. it's not just my mom and papa it's now yes. my friends and i think to move them now will be i don't know something that uh, i wouldn't dare to do and we're doing super fine here eduardo got a permanent contract so it's not like we need to leave right. and 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 you know i think during all this situation and craziness from this year this was the best place to be at the yeah. moment yeah Probably, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, your kids were fully bilingual by the time you moved to Germany. Yes. How yes. did you go about them learning German? Did, was there anything you did or did you just put them in school? Put them in school. Um, I'm going to tell you, we didn't have the time. We made the decision to move to Germany in June mm -hmm. and we moved to Germany in December. Yeah. So to find German lessons for the three of them during a big move because because um, the company pay for our relocation and we need uh, we needed to pack everything and we were also a bit traveler so in the middle of that I had a travel to China for fifteen days and so it was crazy my husband was along with the kids for two weeks and then he was here in Germany establishing and finding a house and do all yeah so it was difficult and we came to Germany not knowing a single word German. And then we realized and in the middle of the school year, uh, January. Yes, the middle of the school year, the middle of the school year. So yeah. it was it was hard to make the decision to send them to an international school because that will be to commute to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. Or How far start, away from Frankfurt is that? Um, Eighty kilometers. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't, and then go with a German, regular German local school, Grundschule, and and that's what we did. Um, but you know, one of the things, and, I, and it makes me really proud, but still, is that day that I dropped them off at school because I, I wasn't used to let them go with the, my boss. And then I see the three of them holding hands and, and at the, yeah, in the car. Oh, and, they, so and they walk away. I still have the picture that I took. And I'm like, okay, there they go. I send them my kids to a school where they don't know anyone and they don't speak the language. So, but then when I picked them up, it was so funny because they came, the three of them, and they helped me and they say, mommy, we didn't, we couldn't understand anything at all, but we play football, football, you know, <laughs> we play football and, and Veronica tells me the girls were very nice and we play Uno cards and, and uh, they know the, the numbers in English. And I was like, wow, Veronica, you made a connection right away. And that's, that's how it started. Wow. That's an yeah. amazing story. Yeah. We did we did have uh, great support from the school, the teachers, and the principal. I, I must say, I'm so happy with the community we have here in, in, in Fulda because Bettina has made a difference. It's, and that is something that I try to promote in my in my Instagram account. And when I do my, my workshops, I always said, please, please, don't come to me to talk about the Germans be, being cold or not friendly because... For us, having these awesome people around us made a difference. Yes, yes. And awesome German teachers, awesome German principal, our neighbors, the church, because I like to volunteer. And Bettina, you, well, you already know me. I came and said, okay, I don't speak German. <laughs> ich heiße Flor Garcia, das was. On that, <laughs> but I want to help. I want to be here. What do you have at church for me to do or help? And they were already, oh, Flor Garcia, come here. We're going to do this and that. And I, I could barely understand anything, but I was there. So I think, I think that that also helped a lot to integrate. Oh, absolutely. I think the community is so important, like with anything in life, but especially with such a big move and such a big yes. change for the whole family. I mean, one thing that immediately comes um, to my mind also, you know, thinking about other families and people I've talked to, yeah. you were in a sense in a privileged position to come from the United States. Yeah. Like you came as Americans 
yeah. with a Venezuelan mom. You came as expats. You didn't come from yesterday. I talked to somebody, you know, her parents came from ex Yugoslavia and she yeah. had a completely different experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, you know, I'm so happy for you and for your kids that this worked out the way it did because, yes. you know, it's so yes. great that you get embraced like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that not everybody is that fortunate. And exactly. Um, that is something, and I was reading an article a while ago, and I read it to my children as well, and I told them, look, um, it's important that we know that we have a privileged passport. Yeah. And I don't want you guys to feel guilty, yeah. but, but you need to know the impact and the influence that that nationality or passport has on other people. Yeah. And you need to use this to help others. You know, yes. now, yes, Flor. that is the thing for me. And, and a little bit what I was telling you about the interview with the Venezuelan radio is like, not every Venezuelan is able to live in the privileged position that I did. Yes. Not every Venezuelan woman or family is able to go to the States and have the, the USA citizenship and then come to Germany and they are the exotic one here. Yes. No. So for me, is I need to help. I need to guide. And, and this part of the multilingual family aspect is hard for them because they tell me, Flor, I see my kids that they go to school and either they are rejected and then they don't learn the English so easily, the ones that go to the States, or they want to fit in so badly that they lose their Spanish because they don't want to speak yeah. it. Yeah. And that is something that we need to take into account. And I say, okay, from my, my point of privilege, I need to just do something. Yes. And we need to do something. I think it's, and this is what you are promoting with this space. It's Absolutely. And I'm so with you on that. This is also the perfect connection, actually, to my next question. Like, how do you see, like, where do you see your role? Like, where do you see your role as a multilingual, multicultural? Because by now you are multicultural, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, how do you see your role connect to the bigger picture? How do you see this all? Yes. You know? Um, you know, Bettina, when I stopped working as a lawyer, it was hard for me. You know? At one point, sometimes we are what we work, what we study, and we say, oh, I'm not a lawyer anymore. What am I going to do now? I have to, to recreate, to, to do something else. And then I study a master's in linguistic and foreign languages. And then I say, okay. Where do I see myself now? I'm going to combine all those people's skills that I needed for law school and for the teaching part and now my business to connect. I see myself connecting. This multicultural aspect allows me to connect with people from different backgrounds to relate to them and somehow, yeah, there, will, there are a lot of experiences that I, I didn't live and that I cannot connect. But I think that if I open my heart, they can connect to me and tell me, Flor, this is what is going on. And, and the same thing with the languages. The languages for me is so important because it's a connection. You and I are talking because we both speak English. Yes. My German is so broken and your Spanish maybe might be so little that this is the way that you and I are yes, connecting absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And 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 in that sense, for me, is so important. And I give the example of my kids that languages are promoted and seen as an asset in this global picture. Yeah. This multicultural upbringing and these uh, different languages at home need to be promoted. You know, no, yeah, doesn't matter the language. You. Like you're, exactly. you're speaking, you're speaking my heart and my mind. Yes. It's, it's, it's that. And Bettina, we need to be very careful because just like they are privileged passports, we need, we do have privileged languages. There are oh, languages absolutely. that we favor absolutely. more. Absolutely. Oh, you speak Spanish. That's exotic. You speak French. Oh, how beautiful. Yes. Then there are uh, another set of languages that yes. we are, oh, you shouldn't speak that. You should speak, uh, learn German right away. Yes. So we need to keep working on that. I think you Absolutely. and I need to promote that because every language is beautiful. Every language is heritage. And every and language, every is language, language opens different doors, right? Yes. yes. And you never know, like, I've, I've, you know, I've talked to people who said to me, well, you know, we think this language is more valuable for our kid to learn than this other heritage language that we have. And mm -hmm. then I said, look, I don't think that this is the kind of argumentation that you should base your decision on. Yeah. I think you should, you know, because you don't know what your kid will want in 20 years from now. No. 
No. And you don't know which doors are going to open for her or for him with yeah. this particular language, even if there's just a small number of speakers, you know? Yeah. Maybe especially then, you know, promote the language and learn okay. them speak it because then it's going to be something special in the end. Yes, okay. yes. And you can make that connection. Right now, my 16 year old is interested in, um, Eddie's interested in literature mm -hmm. and he's reading. Uh, literature from Venezuela, from Colombia, from Latin America, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And we found that connection that you know that you as a mom meet with your teenager. And I was like, what do I do? Oh, he saw my library. He says, Mama, you have all these amazing books. Okay, let's read it. It has taken a lot of time for him because it's a very complicated old fashioned Spanish. But he's fascinated and he asked me, what is this and what is that? And I feel so happy to be able to tell him and say, well, in Venezuela, we, we use that phrase too. Oh, okay. And now he uses it. And I hear him telling the brother or the sister, oh, so, so. And he uses the Spanish phrases. You know, it's connection to something. Amazing. It's amazing. That's amazing. So yeah. which language do your children use with you now? Sp uh, Spanish. Still Spanish. Spanish. And amongst them? English. English. It's not even German yet. No. Nope. It's English. That's English and English with Papa. Ah. Uh -huh. And then outside of the house with every friend, everyone, uh, German. It's German. 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 Oh, yeah, but right now, that they like... still speak um, Spanish with you. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It depends on the day. And I think the Spanish lessons that they have at the gymnasium, at the high school. Ah, they have. Uh, Yes, has helped a lot. They needed to choose between uh, Latin and Spanish, and they chose Spanish. And it has improved the skills a lot because they have the formal grammar part. So I see them that now they speak with less broken Spanish. They still have a strong accent, but accents are also beautiful, I think. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's going to happen. Yeah. That's that's going to happen. I think that's also one of the myths that we need to work really hard on busting this, yeah. you know, bilingualism means that both languages are equally strong and that they're completely balanced. Thank and if you. they're not, that means they're not good at that language or whatever. Like this, this judgment all the time, you know, what's yes. good, what's bad, what's perfect, what's not. Yeah, you are absolutely right. I think that's the first one because, oh, Florence, so worry, my daughter's Spanish is so, um, I don't know, she still cannot find the words and she has an accent. She's not bilingual. I'm like, yes, she is. That is a myth. Both languages doesn't have to be, you don't have to have the same fluency in both of them. No. You, you, you know, the bilingualism is so broad. Yes. And it's, it's so the foundation different. that we lay as parents, right? And yeah. then the kids can decide what to do with that later Absolutely. in their life. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Important. Yes. And then our children can go out into the world and can show the world how cool and how yeah. amazing it is to speak those languages yes. and things you can do with it, right? Yes. Yes. I see it now. You know that the kids are, at the beginning, they were a little bit the strangers, the weird ones, uh, they tell mommy, I'm the weird one who speaks another language. And then now it's like the friends come here and, and, and they try to speak to me in English or Spanish. And like, oh, wow. Just, just now that we have Spanish and English at school, we are trying to practice. And like, it is mom is the way to go. I'm like, okay, come here, talk to me. So it is, you know, it's that connection. They see how now languages are valuable. And, and I think that is a great asset. So. That's amazing. I had so many goosebumps during our conversation. <laughs> now. It has Thank been delightful. so, so much for sharing your story, Flora. It was amazing talking to you and hearing your story. Thanks to you for having me. It was so nice. It's like we need to have a coffee in person one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not that far away from each other. We are going to do that. Okay. Oh, wonderful. We will. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Bettina, thank you so much for the invitation. And, and, and then hopefully we continue changing the world one language at a time. And one family at a time. Yes. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so, so much, Flor. Bye. Bye. Today's multilingual story. I'm super happy and excited to welcome Flor. We did not talk about your name before. You're from Venezuela, so you probably are Flor Garcia and not Flor Garcia. Garcia. Like you said the first one, Bettina, thank you. <laughs>